Yes, class. Good evening. So uh, let, let us start with the revision of atoms. <coughs> atoms we'll do, nuclei we'll try to, atoms and nuclei we'll try to complete it today. Then one class we'll take on semiconductors. Then again, one last round of revision we'll do before your board exam begins. So I think from 24th, most of you are having your exams, no? Chemistry or one exam, I think. From 24th only you people, 24th Feb, right? Or before that? 24th. 24th. Okay. Uh, now see, uh, atoms in atoms, let us quickly revise and we can move on to the numerical part because numericals are more important from this lesson. In dual nature of radiation matter, theoretical portion is more. But again, we'll do the final revision. Uh, so, uh, yes, one more thing. Priya Darshini. Priya, uh, you, I think, one any revision class you have not attended, no? No revision class has been attended by you. Priya, just uh, attend the class of atoms and semiconductors. Then again, we'll begin with the entire revision with the MCQs and exact based, uh, your CBSE based pattern. All right. So do attend the classes still. Atoms and nuclei and semiconductors, at least three lessons also do it again. We'll do these again also with different questions. So in atoms, you have the Bohr's atomic theory. May before we move on to this is a huge topic. Let us first complete this very small topic which is present here in atoms, which we did it in the last of every class. Yes, these two. Impact parameter and distance of closest approach. So this, these are just Rutherford's model of an atom and the limitations of it. Rutherford model said what? I think in your notes also it is given. I have written it everything in the notes. An atom consists of a small and a massive central core, which is known as the nucleus. So with the help of that experiment only, this was concluded when the alpha particle strike the nucleus though from the golden foil. At a certain distance, the alpha particle is deflected by 180 degree. So this small distance which is present before the nucleus and before the deflection of between, actually in between the nucleus and the deflection of alpha particle. So we call this as distance of closest approach, whose formula is 2 into k. k is the uh, constant which we use in electrostat, 9 into 10 to the power 9. Z is the atomic number, E is the electronic charge, kinetic energy is written in the denominator. Impact parameter is that second observation which was made that nucleus which was surrounded by so much number of electrons that the total negative charge was present. So it means atom is, net atom is neutral. So net atom is neutral. Now see, nucleus is there. It, it means alpha particles, these are negatively charged particles or electrons are negatively charged particles. These got deflected. It means they were repelling it. So when will the charges repel each other? If this was alpha particle, this was alpha particle coming, this was positive nucleus. If this was repelling, it means like charges are there. Alpha particle, we know the charge on alpha particle. So it means nucleus are positively charged. So that was the theory part from the mathematical part. You have the impact parameter. Impact parameter is this distance. See, this is the nucleus. This is the nucleus. Here, this is the path of the alpha particle and this is it is getting, here it is getting deflected. So this perpendicular distance from the center of the nucleus or the axis of the nucleus. This is known as impact parameter, whose formula is Z e square. Z is again atomic number, E is the electronic number. Cot theta by two, theta is the angle of deflection. So cot theta by two, this is again K one over four pi epsilon naught you use or directly you use nine into 10 to the power nine. And this is here, it is kinetic energy. All right, so let's practice some questions on this. Then we'll move on to the Bohr's theory.
See, uh, yes, uh, Krishna, your answer, Khalid, your answer is correct. Krishna, Sara, some error is there. Sara, your answer is right. Krishna, just check it once again. See, let me discuss it. What is the distance of closest approach when five mega electron proton approaches a gold nucleus? See, at a distance of R0, let us assume that this is the distance of closest approach. So what is the formula for distance of closest approach? Four or directly, let's write down in terms of K only. So K, Z E square. Or let's write it as two also you can write when you are writing in terms of epsilon naught. So otherwise normally you can mention four K Z E square also. So divided by M B square because the half I have taken already up. Otherwise you can write two K Z E square by kinetic energy. The way I have written it up. I think up above I've written it in this manner only by kinetic energy. But if you take the two up, that will become four. Now let us substitute all the values. So kinetic energy are not, see kinetic energy is given to you. This is kinetic energy only that is given five mega electron volt. So five mega electron volt, you can multiply this by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13. This will become into joules. Mega basically I've converted. Electron volt, you know how to convert it. So 5 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13. This is the kinetic energy. It's better if you use this formula only. It will become confusing otherwise. See. R0 is 2KZE square by kinetic energy. If kinetic energy is given, then let's write it in terms of kinetic energy only. So kinetic energy done. 2 is a constant. K is 9 into 10 to the power 9. This is 9 into 10 to the power 9. All right. Atomic number Z. This we have to write it for gold. So for gold, this is 79. 79. E is the electronic charge, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. This is, or these are all the values that we have to substitute in the formula. So R0 will be 2 into 9 into 10 to the power 9 into 79 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 whole square by kinetic energy, 5 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13 joules. So when you solve this, roughly you'll get your answer as 2.28. Also, you can write or rounding it off, I'm writing is it has 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 14 meters. Note down the solution. Let us practice one more numerical that has that is actually a question from your NCRT and has come in CBSE 2015.
yes yes here also you will consider it as 79 because uh, this is giger marchan experiment only that is the rutherford's experiment so their gold foil was only used so i think if you want you can add it in giger marchan experiment also at the end of the question so it considers that as 79 also it's a very similar question that it is just that's why i'm just that i have just given you because this has come once in the previous year 2015 last it came and it's also present in your ncrt just see now try to answer this question
Yes. So uh, Krishna, Sara, and Khalid have given the correct answer. See, similar question is this. R naught is equal to 2KZD square by kinetic energy. Here this time the kinetic energy that is given is 7.7 7 .7 mega electron volt. So multiplied by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13 joules. Now when you put the value 2 into K is 9 into 10 to the power 9. Z again, 17, because this is gold foil. Uh, e, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 whole square divided by kinetic energy, 7.7 .7 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 17. This is uh, minus 19, sorry. This is the entire, uh, not 19. We have converted mega electron volt. No? So we'll write it as minus 13 because 10 to the power 6 will also be used. So 10 to the power minus 13. When you solve this, you'll get your answer as 3 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters. Around 3 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters you get. Or it's better, uh, not 3, sorry, 13 to 10 to the power minus 15. Or it's better if you write it as 30 Fermi meter only. Same answer it is. Note it down, then let's move on to Bohr's theory now. These questions can only come maximum from impact parameter.
Okay, now uh, coming to Bohr's atomic model. See, from Bohr's atomic model, all the postulates are important. Postulates can directly be asked to you. Uh, this L is equal to MVR, which is NH by 2 pi, 2 pi, that is important. Then from here, you have the velocity and radius. This radius formula also is used often. Kinetic energy is relation, potential energy is relation, and the total energy, which is also known as mechanical energy, is that relation. Then Rydberg's formula. This is a very important formula. Most of the questions are based on this because you have to find out the wavelength. And using the wavelength, you can be asked to find out different quantities, like you can be asked to calculate energy. So if you know wavelength, then using HC by lambda, you can calculate the energy. Now, these were spectral line series. If the wave, the electron jumps from uh, any orbit, any higher orbit to the first orbit, which we call as the ground state, the series is known as Lyman series. And this lies in the UV region spectrum. Then Balmer series is the second one. That is, electron will jump from any of the states to the second state, which we call as the first excited state. And electrons lie in the visible region. Then third is the Pastian series, where electrons jump from any orbit to the third orbit, which we call as the second excited state. We call this as the second excited state. So this is infrared region, lies in infrared region. In bracket series, it lies, the electron jumps from any orbit, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, infinity, but ultimately lands up back to fourth orbit. So this is third excited state. So this lies is infra, in infrared region. Then a fun series you have, where the electron jumps from any of the orbit to the fifth one. So this also lies in infrared region. So last three lie in the infrared region. So energy level diagram is this level G energy level diagram. Questions will only be asked. You don't have such values. Uh, energies, please remember all the energies values, at least till the fifth one. Please try to remember it till the fifth one. This is important. Energy level till the fifth one. Because you have seen so many questions are there based upon this. So your time will be wasted first by calculating the end, just putting the value of n first, getting the values of energy, then addition and subtraction. It's better if you directly remember the values at least till fifth. Then if any other part can come, then you can note it down by yourself. Limitations are there, then ionization energy and excitation potential. Let us complete the rest of the portion that is left.
Yes, class. Now see, ground state energy of hydrogen atom is given. Here in such type of questions, this is actually a question from 2008. Kinetic energy is asked in second excited state. So see, find out the energy in second excited state. What is second excited state? How will you write N for second excited state? Tell me in the chat column, N for second excited state. Uh, yes, Sarah, right. Third, second excited state means N is equal to three. So what will be energy? E3, I have told you to remember it. Otherwise, even if you solve it, you will get it as minus 1.51 electron volt. How will you get it? Minus 13.6 divided by nine. Like this only you will get it, right? Now see, once you will divide it, this is what is the value of E3 you will obtain. See, that's why I was saying, remember at least till E5. Because in your, most of the questions involve E5 and that will ease your calculation. It will make your calculation go faster. So E3 is this, this is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, this is the total energy. Kinetic energy is negative of the total energy. So this becomes minus of E3. That is minus minus 1.51 which is 1.51 electron volt, only this much. Now, second part says potential energy in the third excited state. So third excited state means E4. So E4 will be minus 13.6 divided by four whole square, which is minus 13.6 by 16. Again, I've told you, remember this, zero point, minus 0 0.85 electron volt. So we have to find out potential energy. Potential energy is the total energy. So this becomes 2 into E4. That is 2 into minus 0 0.85. So this becomes 1.7, right? 1.7, minus 1.7 electron volt. This will be the answer for the second part. Lastly, you have if electron jumps from the ground state. Okay, if electron jumps to the ground state from third excited state you have to calculate the photons, uh, wavelength of photons. See, if it is going from uh, third to ground state, no. Third excited state means n is equal to four and ground state means n is equal to one. It means energy will be E4 minus E1 and E4 is minus 0 0.85 minus and E1 is minus 13.6. So this is uh, 12.75, right? Just check 12.75 electron volt. So now this is the total energy you have. So delta E is equal to HC by lambda. From here, you will find wavelength as HC by delta E. 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 34. C will be 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Energy will be 12.75. Convert it into joules because we have to write everything in terms of SI unit. 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Check and let me know what's the answer. Note it down. We'll see some more questions. Mm
See, it says that in the ground state of hydrogen atom, its Bohr's radius is given as 5.3 to 10 to the power minus 11. So this is for ground state. If the atom goes in the excited state such that the radius becomes 21.2 into 10 to the power minus 11, you have to find out the value of principal quantum number. See, in quantum physics, principal quantum number basically means n on t, value of n. So how will you calculate the value of n? Radii, both the radii are given to you. So radius is directly proportional to n square. So if radius is directly proportional to n square, take the ratio of both the n. So n2 by n1 whole square. This will be equal to r2 by r1. r2 by r1. So value of r2, 21.2 into 10 to the power minus 11 by... 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 11, 10 to the power minus 11 gets cancelled. And this is, this will be exactly 4, right? Answer will be 4. So, see, N2 by N1 is 4, it is 2, because N2 by N1 whole square was 4. So, when you take the root, under root 4 will be 2. Uh, see, class, this is ground state. It means R1 has been specified. Eh, sorry, N1 has been specified. N1 is 1. So N2 will become 2. And N1 is 1. Now, principal quantum number, yes, this is the answer. Total energy of the atom in this excited state. So you have to find out in the second excited state. So calculation is easy for the second part. This is the first part. This is the second part for the second energy. Uh, minus 13.6 divided by 2 whole square, that is 4 minus 13.6 divided by 4, answer will be minus 3.4 electron volt. So this was a question from 2013. Note down the solution.
calculate the shortest wavelength in the Balmer series of the hydrogen atom in which region of hydrogen spectrum does this wavelength lie? See, this is a question from 2015 and 2016. See, shortest wavelength, when it means, it means the second wavelength. One is fixed, fixed for Balmer series where the electrons will finally land. Right, one is fixed. What is that number? What is the value of n for Balmer, which is fixed, where the electron will jump? Two. Good, Priya. It will be two. So this is fixed, means n1 is fixed. Two. Whenever a shortest wavelength is mentioned, it means infinite. Now your answer is direct. Use Rydberg's equation because you have to find out the wavelength. So 1 by lambda will be the Rydberg's constant. 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. So this becomes Rx 1 by 4 minus 1 by infinity, 1 by wavelength. So lambda will be 4 divided by the Rydberg's constant. That is 4 divided by 1.1 into 10 to the power 7. Directly use 10 to the power 7 only. That is also enough. So wavelength will be around 3.637 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters. This is the answer. Just check it once also. So this wavelength, and you know, if it is Balmer series, no need to even find out anything. It means it lies in the, in the ultraviolet region. Note it down. Then uh, text me done once completed. Okay, then all those who have completed, you all can leave. Um, rest of the portion we'll complete on Wednesday now. Okay, thank you so much, class. Thank you, teacher. Love is.